So we tried to build up a picture of what Git is. Uh, we had a made up scenario in the last video where we worked our way toward different ways of tracking backup versions until we got to something that resembled something that looks a lot like Git. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna switch and I wanna actually do something with Git. And I wanna introduce you to your first handful of commands. Now, as we start in on Git, I want to just address the fact that I assume that people are at different stages in terms of how much they know about Git. So some of you are gonna watch what I do here and you're gonna say, well, I already know all this. And that's fine. So if you feel comfortable with these, with these ideas, that's great. And hopefully you'll learn something. And if not, it's good review. Other people will see this and have never, never touched Git or have always been intimidated, just done a few commands. So my goal for all of you is that you, you get through each one of these phases of what we're gonna do with learning Git and you feel like, okay, I've, I've got a sense of that. I understand it. I feel like I've mastered what's going on there, okay? So what I wanna show you now is how you would start with Git and how you would um, create repos, initialize them, clone them, fork them, and I wanna show you how to work with files in some very basic ways. And try and relate it back to what we did previously when we were working on, um, working on our you know, mental model of what, what Git looks like. Okay, so let's start out, Let, let's make a project. So I'm gonna, uh, and if you wanna try this, do this along with me, that's great. I've got Git installed on my machine and you'll need to have Git installed on your machine, whether that's Windows or Mac or Linux. So I'm gonna make a project folder. And um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna initialize Git in here. So right now I have nothing in this directory, it's totally empty. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say git init, like so. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna create that .git directory. So this is kind of like the idea of what we had in our previous video where we were working with, um, where we were working with uh, the backup directory. Now, one thing to note about uh, about working with init, so you're very rarely going to initialize a repository. So for most of your open source work, if you start a project, I guess you'll initialize it. But a lot of the time, you're going to copy somebody else's Git repository. So we'll spend time on that in a minute. But I want to at least show you how you begin if you're starting from something that's just bare, like the initial commit of this thing. And if you're working with... Um, version 228 or newer of Git, which is uh, one of the latest versions of Git at the time that I'm uh, doing this demo. Git init also supports um, specifying a different uh, branch name for the, for the branch that you're gonna work on. So typically the default branch name in Git is master. It's been quite a bit of discussion lately in the tech community about trying to ch use more inclusive language trying to move away from using names like master and slave and so on. So you'll see a lot of projects that will have switched. And so this is sort of rolling through lots of different repos are making this. The change was uh, made to Git. So when you're initializing this, you can always change from the master to a main branch or a default branch or something like that trunk and so on. So that's been added. Okay, so we have a, um, we have our repo and what, you know, what, what can we do with it? So let's, let's, um, I'm gonna start up my editor here. And we can make some files. I'm not gonna do a lot of coding here, but let's do a little bit of work just to be able to um, work with some of these, some of these different files. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a file and you know my file, hello world, save that. And we have a file. So, the, so the, the first command that I want you to really get comfortable with is git status. So status allows us at any time to check and see what is the current state of my repository. So when we talk about a repository, we have a couple of things that we refer to. So right now, if you look at what's in here, I have a .git directory. So this .git directory is where all of my database of 
previous snapshots of my files where my commits are located and all the configuration information and so on, where you're, you can go into it if you want um, and you can look around and, but really you don't do much in here. It's very rare. I can count on one hand the number of times that I've needed to go in here and do something in you know 10 years or more of working with Git. You, it, generally, you let Git manage it. So when you type Git commands, whenever you type those Git commands, Git is going to operate on that directory for you. Okay, so I have my file. My file is sitting in what we refer to as the working directory. So I have a .git directory, which is where all my old snapshots and everything are. And I have my the current thing, that the way my files look right now in my working directory. So that's what I'm looking at right here when I'm looking at these, at these files. Okay, and if I type git status, it tells me, all right, you're on a particular branch. We're gonna talk about branches, uh, not this week, but coming up. So I'll return to that. But for now, we're on a branch. It tells me that I have no commits yet because I haven't done anything in this repository. And it says you have one untracked file. So the concept of an untracked file to Git means that Git is aware that there's a file in the working directory that it is not currently tracking, that it isn't um, watching for changes, that it doesn't have any snapshots of. So this file exists, but it doesn't exist to Git. So there's a difference between what's in your working directory and what's in Git. Putting something in this directory doesn't automatically mean that it gets put inside of, of Git. So how do, we, how do we fix that? How do we make Git aware of it? Well, it tells us right here, Git often gives you uh, hints in when you run these commands. It says, if you wanted to add this, you need to use Git add in order to track it. So that's what I'll do. I'm gonna say Git add and the name of the file that I want to add, git add file. And I'm going to do git status again. So I want you to compare what we had above versus what we have now. And what's happened now is we have moved that file into what's called the staging area. Okay, now this is one of the weirdest, and I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's just one of these weird things about git that you have to get your head around. So let me try and explain this, this concept of a staging area. So if you, if you look, we have our file and we have this .git directory. So I told you that everything that's in here is your working directory. This is the, like, the place where you're doing all your work on your files. It's whatever I have in my editor over here. Everything in Git, this is where all of my historical information is gonna go. All my snapshots, my commit information, the metadata, it all goes in there. And then there's this third thing called the staging area, whoops, or people, it'll sometimes be called the cache. And this thing is, for all intents and purposes, it's invisible. And because it's invisible, it's hard, it's hard to see, right? Okay, that, that makes sense. So let me try and give you a metaphor to understand this. So if you've ever gone and seen a play, you know that uh, when they're putting on a production of a play, you have, a, you have a director or you have people who are in charge of the play and they're talking to the actors and they're saying, okay, in this scene, I want to have the actors, I want to have them situated on the stage in a particular way. So they're doing this blocking. They're saying, we want to have the lights like this. I want to have this person here, this person here. And they might, you know, get really technical about it. This is exactly how we want to set up the stage, how everything needs to be for this part of the play. So when we're talking about Git, what we do is we take, we take the state of the working directory and we create snapshots. So a snapshot is the current state of every file in the project, every file that's being tracked. And it takes a, it takes a picture as it were, like a binary picture, it takes those files, copy those files into the .git directory. What the staging area is, it's a place where I can assemble my next snapshot. So I can tell Git, here's how I want my next snapshot to look so that when I actually make the snapshot, when I commit the snapshot, it's, it's clear what's in it. So when I say Git status, what happened when I said Git add file 
is that it took the current form of this file and it put it into the staging area and the color changed. So now I have a new file um, in the staging area. Okay, so when a file is in the staging area, it's ready to be committed. It's, it's assembled into the staging area, it's ready to go. So how do we, um, how do we go to the next, the next stage? How do I actually make a snapshot? The way that I do that is I say git commit dash m um, adding new file. Now you'll notice that when I say commit, I don't specify which, which files I wanna commit. How does Git know what I want to put into this snapshot? It knows because these changes are currently sitting in the staging area. So these are changes that are ready to be committed as soon as I say go. So it's waiting on me to, you know, initiate uh, creating this, creating this uh, new snapshot. So I'm going to press enter, and what it's going to do is it's going to create, a, it's going to create a commit. So just to show you what that looks like, I'm gonna use another command, git log. Git log shows me that I am currently sitting on this commit right here. And this right here is a hash. So just like we were talking about in the previous video, git uses hashes. So when it identifies things, it identifies things by the hash of their contents. And it, it does this with the commit too. So we know who made this commit, we know when the commit was made, we have some information that a new file was added and we can see, uh, we, we can see like a log of what happened. Um, okay, so I'll come back to talking about logging and so on in a minute, but let's go back and, and look at what's going on here a little bit more uh, when, I, when I'm adding and committing files. So at this point, if I said git status, you'll see that it tells me again, okay, you're on this branch and it says there's nothing to commit. Your working tree is clean. In other words, the current state of the files in my working directory or my working tree, they are the same as the last commit that I made. There's nothing new, nothing has been changed. If I go over here and I make a, an edit to my file and I add another character and I save this file and I do git status. You'll see that status has identified that something has changed in the working in the working tree or in my working directory. So you have to be careful when you're reading this to understand what it's saying. It says there are changes that are currently not staged for commit. So what git says is git says I know about this file. I know about uh, the file you're working on, and I see that you've made a change to it. How does Git know that I've made a change to it? Well, Git stores the exact contents of every file that have the way it's looked forever, and it hashes it, and it knows the current version of the file, and it can hash it. And if those are different, if those two hashes produce different values, it knows, okay, well, this file has changed. So it says, the changes in your working directory are not currently staged for commit. So we added a new file to the, to the staging area in order to commit it by saying git add. If you wanna edit a file that already exists in git, you do the same thing. You would say git add file, and I can say status, and it says, okay, you have changes to be committed, and this file has been modified. So if you want to add a file or if you want to modify a file, you in both cases, you do git add name of the file. And when you're done assembling all the things that you want to put in here, you're going to say git commit add dash m for a log message and type in uh, whatever your log message is. By the way, if I don't put dash m and I type commit, what it's going to do is it's gonna open up my default editor. Whatever editor has been configured in Git, this is a configurable thing, mine uses Emacs. I can say in here, uh, modify file to add a period, save this and close and it will create another commit. So I'm slowly building up commits as I make changes make changes to these files. Okay, let's try another thing. 
what if I make a second file, file two? So now in my working tree, I have file and I have file two. So let's put some contents in here. Git status. Git status tells me the following. You have a file that I've never seen before. This is a file that exists in your directory, but doesn't exist in the current snapshot that you were working off of. It is an untracked file, meaning Git is not, is not keeping track of changes to it. It sees that it's there, but it's not keeping track of it. So if we want to add this file in, we would git add file to. Git status says, okay, there are changes in the staging area that need to be committed. So it's basically copied that version of file two into the staging area, like a temporary directory. And it's waiting for me to say, okay, go ahead and make these changes. Now, an interesting thing that isn't obvious here that I wanna call out. When I make a snapshot, so if I were to commit what's currently in the staging area, it's not just file two that's in the staging area. The staging area also has the current version of file in it as well. So when we do snapshots in Git, they are a complete snapshot of the whole working tree. So the way that all of the files look exactly at that moment. So if there are no changes to file, what it's going to do is it's going to use the current version or the previous version that it already had that it already had recorded in Git. It hasn't had to make any changes to it. I'll show you what that would look like if I had more than one change. So I'm going to add this file into the staging area, which I've done with git add, and I'm going to commit uh, add new file file two. So I've got three commits now, starting from the bottom and working my way up. I added the new file, I modified that file, and now I've added a second file. So I have two files that are in here right now. Okay, so let's try something else. What if I put a new line in here and saved it? And what if I also changed file two? When I do git status, it's going to do the same thing that we just saw a moment ago, but it's gonna do it for every file that is tracked or every file that is untracked. So for example, if I were to touch a, a third file, file three, so now I have a third file, you'll see that git status is gonna tell me the status of everything that's going on in my working directory. Now, as you start to get lots and lots of files, you could have quite a bit of information that's getting displayed here, but just take it slowly, take it apart bit by bit. So we have sections, changes that are not staged for commit. So when you see the word staged, you automatically need to think about, okay, I'm, I'm thinking about the staging area. I'm thinking about assembling my next snapshot so that it looks exactly the way I want it to. And you might say, What's the point? Why don't I just take all of the files that are in the working directory right now and put them into the next commit? Well, let me show you, let me show you why you might want, not want to do that. I have an untracked file three, and I have these two files, file and file two. So what if I did this? What if I said git add file three? Let's put some, I'm gonna put some contents in file three too. File three. I'm gonna add file three and I'm gonna say git status. So what do we see? What is currently in the staging area? Let's think about this. In the staging area right now, I have this new file, file three. I have the old versions of file one and file two, but the modifications, the changes that I've made to file and file two have not been staged. So they're not in the staging area. So it's possible to put together commits that contain a piece of this file, a piece of this file, and you put them together, but you're not necessarily having to commit every single change that you have in your working directory. So let's do this. Let's say git uh, commit dash m adding file three, 
git status. So you'll notice that I did a commit, but I still have changes that are to files that Git knows about. So these are files that Git is tracking, but the changes haven't been staged yet. What if I, what if I stage one of them? How would I do that? Git add file two. So I've added file two, and you can see that the changes to file two have been staged. They're in the staging area along with the, with the other files, the old versions of those files, but the changes to this file have not been, have not been added yet. So if I say, all right, I want to commit, git commit dash m uh, updating file two, git status still shows me that there is a set of changes to file. So I say, all right, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna finally add these, git add file, git status. Okay, it's been added to the staging area and now I'm gonna commit it. Git commit dash m update file. So if you look at my log now, what you see is that I've taken a set of changes and I've broken them up into smaller pieces. So over time, I'm making slow incremental progress to my files. I'm modifying this file, I'm modifying this file. Sometimes I wanna commit those changes together and sometimes I wanna separate them out into their own commits. And you might say to yourself, why would I do this? Why don't, like, don't I only care about the final version of these files? The answer is that you don't. So you are interested not only in the final version of your files, but you're also interested in how you got there. So what Git is gonna allow us to do in the later stages when we get better at using it, we're gonna be able to go backwards and forward in time, and we're gonna be able to figure out why things are breaking. So if a bug is happening, we can go and figure out when it started to happen. If we've changed code and we wanna go back and get something from the past the way we used to do it, we can do that too. So we're gonna make use of lots and lots of different aspects of this historical flow. Also, once we start working with more people on a project, we're gonna be able to have different people working on different files at the same time, and their changes are all gonna to be to different parts of the project. We're not gonna be all worrying about exactly what it looks like right now. We can each do our own thing as we move around. All right, let me show you another thing that may not be obvious. My tree is clean, meaning all of the all of the files that are in my working directory are the same as what is in my Git repo right now. Okay, when I'm when I'm in there, and when I talk about it being in there, if I um, if I show you this directory, you can see that Git is storing all of the data all the different trees and all the different, all those files that I told you about, it's storing them all using hashes inside of an objects directory. So it's the same idea that we did with our dot backup. This is what Git is doing and it's constantly adding more and more to this directory. So when I, when I say Git status and it says that everything is clean, it means that the files that you have right now in your working directory are the same as the last snapshot that was taken for this branch. Okay, so let's go and do something else. Let's go in here and let's remove the period from line two from goodbye and let's save it. We type git status. You're gonna type git status 8,000 times a day. It's a fantastic command. It always lets you see what's going on. So as soon as I type it, it says you have changes to um, to this file, I could actually ask what the changes are. If I said git diff, it will print out and it will say, the old version of the file had a period and that is represented by this minus. And then the new version of this line, the new version of this file doesn't have a period. And so there's that's the difference between the old version and the new version of this file. So we'll talk more about reading these diffs in subsequent weeks. But for now, we have a change to our file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that, git add file. And git status shows me that I have a change that is ready to be added to the file. 
if I were to say git diff staged, what that is showing me is it's showing me the diff or the difference between the last snapshot that was taken and what is in the staging area, okay? Now, what if I did this? What if I went into the same file and I also deleted the period from the first line? And I type git status. Take a look at this. So now it says there are changes that are ready to be committed. These are changes that have been staged and they are for this file. There are also changes that have not been staged they're not in the staging area. So what's happened is that the working directory is different than what's in the staging area. And so you see both of these things happening at the same time. This is weird. Why on earth would that happen? If I look at the diff of what's between the last snapshot and what's in the staging area, you can see that I used to have a period at the end of goodbye and now I don't have a period. If I type git diff, and I don't specify what's in the staging area, if I just say git diff, it's gonna show me the difference between what's in my working directory and what's in the staging area. And you can see that I used to have a period next to hello world, and now I don't. So this part of git is, uh, it's hard because the staging area is so important, but it's, it's kind of invisible. So you have to think to yourself, what I'm doing when I add files, I'm not adding them to Git, I'm adding them into this like temporary staging area. I am creating my snapshot so that when I say commit, it's gonna take whatever is, in the whatever is in the stage and it's going to turn that into a snapshot. So how could I, how could I take this version of the file that has both periods missing and how could I make that the version that I'm gonna commit? Well, if you ever see this situation right here, all you have to do is you can say, I wanna add file. And you'll see that what it's done is it has taken both of those changes. So I removed a period from the first line and I removed a period from the second line. And so those two changes have been incorporated into one change and that is sitting in the staging area. So now if I were to commit uh, remove periods from file, it would take both of those. So the version of the version of file that went into that snapshot doesn't have periods. That's what you're seeing. Like if I cat file, you'll see that I don't have periods at the end of at the end of what's here. So we're going to talk about the staging area a lot. You're going to have to work around figuring this piece out, and it can be um, it can be I don't know. It can take some, it can take a while to get used to it. So remember that you have. You have what's in Git, you have what's in your working directory, and then you also have this thing in the middle, this staging area where what's in your working directory is getting ready to go into Git, but it's not there yet. And so we have to, we have to um, move between these, these three things. Okay, so we've talked about adding. Let's talk about removing. How do I delete a file? Well, we all know how to delete a file. If I said rm file three, it would delete the file, but where would it delete it from? It would delete it from my working directory. Like it would delete this file from here. But what we wanna do is we wanna not only delete it from here, but we also wanna make a snapshot of all of my project files without that file. So I wanna remove it from Git so the same way that I added something to the staging area, I now need to remove something from the staging area. So this is another thing that is not obvious. When I say git status, and it says nothing to commit, working tree is clean, what is currently on the staging area? Well, what is currently on the staging area is exactly the same as what is sitting in my working tree. So the version of my files that are in the working tree 
that is also currently in the staging area. So the staging area always represents the last snapshot that you did. So you're working off of the last version or the last snapshot of what happened. So if I wanted to dump this file so that it doesn't exist anymore uh, in, from going forward, I would say git, instead of add, I would say rm. So I wanna remove. So git rm file three. Now you watch, when I do this, file three will also disappear from my working directory. So I'm gonna say git rm file three, and you'll see that it did two things. So not only did it remove it from the staging area, so you can see that changes are ready to be committed. So it has deleted file three from the staging area, and it has also removed file three from the working directory. So it removed it from two places. So how do I, how do I take a snapshot of my files now without file three in there? Well, I have to pull it out of the staging area, and then I have to commit and say, removing file three. So the dot git directory just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Like look at all the things that are in here. So you, ha you haven't actually deleted that file forever. All you've done is you've deleted it from the, the snapshot that you just put into git. And now you're making new snapshots. You're going forward from that version of the code that doesn't have file three. But there are previous versions, like all of the all of the versions that I have here, like when I added file three, all of that stuff still exists in Git. So we haven't lost it. So I'm not gonna, well, maybe I already am overwhelming you, but I'm not gonna overwhelm you more by trying to show you how to go back in time and use Git like a time machine, but we are going to do that. So when we talk about branches and we talk about moving around in history, I'll show you how you can recover files and you can get things back. So for now, let's just leave that. I'll in a minute, I'll do a, a little demonstration of it. But for now, trust me when I say that that isn't gone from Git, it's just gone from your working directory and it's gone from the staging area. So the staging area right now, if I say git status, git status, it represents exactly the same state that my working directory has, which means there is no file three sitting in here anymore. Okay, so we know how to add a file, but we could also, if we wanted to, we could add a directory of files. We could add multiple files. I could add file one, file two, file three. So there's lots and lots of ways of adding files. The one thing that I want you to be careful about though is I want you to be careful about adding everything in the current directory. So a lot of times when I see students learning to do this, they wanna type as little as possible and they end up adding too many files. So lots of times when you're working on a piece of code, you wanna be careful because you don't always want to add all of the files in your working directory into the staging area. I would suggest to you that you always type out the name of the file that you want to put in there or the name of the files that you want to put in there. It will save you from having to do a lot of surgery on your uh, staging area to remove things from it. That's how we add. How do we remove? Git rm. So try not to remove files from this directory. You want to remove them from the staging area as opposed to just removing them from, um, from your working tree. So if I said uh, remove file two and I say get status, you'll see that this change has not been staged for commit. Can you make sense of that? So the file is gone from the working tree, but it's still sitting in the staging area. So Git says um, you either need to restore the file, which would mean copy it from the staging area back into your working tree, or you need to remove that file yourself. So if I said Git rm file two, now it will show me that this file has been deleted. Um, and if I decide, you know what, I actually don't wanna do this, Git tells me how to undo it. So I could say git restore staged file two and um, here 
it takes me back to the state I was in a second ago. If I wanted to get here, let's just restore this. Restore file two and file two is back. There's file two right there. So when you're, when you're adding and removing files, you're adding and removing them from the staging area and you're getting ready to create this. Um, you're getting ready to create this snapshot. Okay, so I wanna to talk to you as well about about forking and cloning and all of that. So, so far what we did was we created this project folder, my project. My project is a Git repository. What is a Git repository? A Git repository is a directory that has a .git folder in it, like so. So there's no, there's no magical uh, server that's running. There's no, there's just a bunch of files. So a Git repository is files on disk. That's all it is. So there isn't a there isn't a database somewhere else that you have to worry about. Like if you wanted to delete this, you would just go and delete this, um, delete this this directory, and it would be gone. So in, so in addition to saying Git init, which is one way of starting a Git repository, another way of starting a Git repository, and probably the more common one that you're going to use, is that you can clone an existing Git repo. So what if I wanted to make a duplicate copy of my repo that I was just working on? Well, we can easily do that. I can say git clone my project and I wanna clone that into, let's call it my project clone. So it says cloning into my project clone. So if I go into my project clone and um, I look at what's here, you can see that I have a .git directory, I have a file one, I have a file two. If I say git log, you can see that all of my commits, all the commits that I've ever made are here. So the entire history The entire history of the project, the entire .git folder, all of these objects and all the trees and commits and everything that have been created, they're all copied over. So a, a clone of a project is literally that. It takes the, the, git, the .git folder in one and it makes a duplicate copy and pulls it over here. And it also does something else. You'll notice that it has put some files into my working directory. So remember we said that a, a git repo is two things. It is this .git directory where all of your database is stored. And it's also all of the current versions of the files that are sitting in your working directory. So what git has done is it has taken the most recent version of my code, this version right here where I removed file three, and it has pulled those files out of Git and put them into my working directory. So they're there. So if I were to make a change to this project, so for example, let's create a new file, let's call it file four. So I'm gonna to touch file four. So I now have file, file two, and file four. Git status shows me that I have this file four. So I'm gonna git add file four and I'm gonna git status, and you'll see that file four has been added to the staging area, and I'm gonna git commit dash m adding file four. So what it's done is it has made another commit on top of the previous commit that I had where I created file three. Now, if I, I'm doing this in my clone, if I were to go back to my project and do git log, you'll see that I don't have that commit. And you'll also see that I don't have that file. So if I, um, if I show you the my project clone, it's there, but it's not here in this one. So what I want you to see here is that when you clone a repository, you're making a copy of it at that moment. But after that moment, they get out of sync. So we're gonna have to learn how to constantly sync the changes between my 
uh, version of a repository and your version of a repository so we can share code whenever we make changes. Git has a mechanism to do it, but Git isn't like Dropbox or something. It doesn't automatically sync changes between two computers to keep everything in sync. It's not designed that way. So whenever you do a clone, it's going to be an exact duplicate copy of everything that's ever happened, but um, but not going forward, just up until that moment. All right, so let's talk about cloning an existing big project. We haven't been uh, working on a big project yet. I've just been working on code that I've written, but how would I do this if I was working, let's say on GitHub? Okay, so I wanted to play with a project here that um, the 1.0 version of GitHub CLI, as I'm writing this, was just recently released. And I'm interested in taking a look at the code. So this is a tool for being able to work with GitHub from the command line. They've written their own GH command. Um, it, it does lots of things that let you connect up to GitHub because Git and GitHub are not the same thing. The GitHub CLI tool lives in this repository right here. And what I'd like to do is I would like to, um, I'd like to work with this code. I'd like to get a version of this code that I can work with. So the first thing that I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to clone this into my own GitHub account. Now GitHub refers to this as forking. So you can see um, up here, it says fork your own copy to your account. So if I click here, I can fork it into my GitHub account. And so it makes a copy. So really it's like photocopying the whole project. I'm taking an exact copy of everything and it's being copied over. So look at this. This was the original. The original is CLI slash CLI and the new one is humpd, which is my account, slash CLI. And you can see that it says it's been forked from this repository here. So on, on GitHub servers, they have done the same thing that I did here when I said, uh, you know, git clone my project, my project clone like that. So they call it forking, but that's really what it means. It means make a duplicate copy. Now, why do I do this? The version of the original version, what I'm going to call the upstream version, this upstream version, I don't have write access to. I have read access to it. I can read this, but I can't make changes to it. So what I do is I fork it. And when I fork it, I get my own copy exactly duplicated. And now I have the ability to go and make any changes that I want to this code. Okay. Now, so far, the version that I have here is sitting on github.com. It's sitting on their servers, not on my machine. So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to pull that down to my machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the code button here and I'm going to copy this, this git URL like so. And one of the things you can do when you clone is instead of giving a directory, you can give a URL. So I'm going to clone, um, I'm going to clone a URL to a Git repo, not a not a URL to a Git to the Git project on you know on the web, but a URL to a dot Git uh, to a, a dot Git repository. So I'm going to change directories here. I'm going to go to my repos and I'm going to say Git clone, and I'm going to paste that URL right here. So you can see that it ends in dot Git. So dot Git is that Git directory that we've been talking about. I'm going to press enter and it's going to clone and it's going to download all of the objects in that upstream repositories database. So what it's doing is it's creating this CLI directory. So if I go into CLI and I do an LS like so, you'll see that there is a dot git directory and the got the dot git directory has every version of the code, every version of every one of these files and folders and everything, all those snapshots, all those commits, they've all been copied in here. So at this point, I don't even need my network anymore. I could disconnect from the network and I could work offline and I could do everything I need to do because I have the entire history of this project all in here. Now, the second thing that it's done is it has created 
all of these files in my working directory, in my working tree. So it has copied these out so that I um, I can work I can work with them. So let's just open this up. Let's open up this folder. So we've got this big uh, folder of, you know, or, uh, not folder, but rather a project of all files and folders that are in this uh, in this project. If you look at the log, the log goes up to today. So you can see if I start scrolling down through this, these are all the commits. It goes on and on and on and on. I wonder how far back it goes. I can just keep going back all the way. So every one of these commits, all the way back to the very, very first commit, I don't know how far back it goes, but it could be years, it could be decades um, that a project has been going on that they have history for. And when you clone it, you're downloading all of it. So this one goes all the way back to Oct Thursday, October the 3rd, 2019. And this was the commit right here initial commit. So let's see what the project looked like back then. So I'm going to grab this right here and I'm going to say git checkout dash B. I'm going to check out that commit. Now what I want you to watch is I want you to watch what happens over here to the files that I'm working on in my editor. So you'll see that they completely changed. And if I were to um, look at the log, you see that the log only has one thing in it right now. So right now it's as if I have gone back in time and I'm looking at the files the way they looked in, in uh, 2019. If I were to check out the one I was on a second ago, you see that my files are all back again. So what I want you to notice, I'll do it again. you'll see that the files that are in the working directory represent the version of the code that I'm sitting on at the moment. So when you're in Git, you're always sitting on some current commit. What's in the staging area, what, what we refer to as the head commit. The head is where you are at the moment. So if I were to clear this and say git log, you'll see that the head is pointing to this commit right here. And if I were to change back to the uh, one that I was, whoop, uh, if I was to change back to the other one, you'll see that head is now pointing here. So depending on which one of these snapshots you point to, you're going to get a different version of the files that go in here. So I'm going to, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this today because we're just getting going on thinking about how how to add files, how to understand what's going on with the staging area and so on. But I wanted you to see what happens when you have a larger, uh, a larger piece of code like this. So let's make a change. I'm gonna make a small change. This week we're also talking about licenses. So here's the license file for the um, GitHub CLI. And it says that it's copyright 2019 to github.inc. And uh, this is the MIT license, which we're gonna be talking about. And so um, what else do we have in here? We have a readme file. So the GitHub CLI, all the information about working with the GitHub CLI. And you could come in here and you could, um, you know, you could edit this. So let's say for example, that I'm, uh, we'd love to hear your feedback about GH. If you spot bugs or have features that you'd really like to see, please check out uh, the contributing page. So let's say that I'm going to um, add an exclamation mark here. So instead of a period, I'm going to make this an exclamation. I'm going to save this and I'm going to do what we did before. I'm going to ask Git to see if it can spot the changes that I just made. So I'm going to say Git status. It says you are currently on this branch. So I'm on the trunk branch. There are changes not staged for commit. So it says I see that there has been a change to a file that I am tracking, readme.md. However, it's not in the staging area. What is that change? Git diff. Git diff shows me that this has been changed. So this line, the way that these diffs work, it shows you that this line was deleted 
and then it was replaced with this line here. So it has been updated to include this uh, exclamation point. How would I get this change into the code? Git add readme, git status. So now it says, I see a change and the change has been staged. So this is sitting in the staging area and it's ready to be committed. So if I said git commit dash M, add more emphasis to read me, it's going to show that I have made this change. So if I do git log, you'll see that this is the last change that we had but now there's a new change. My head is pointing to this new commit that I just made. I added more emphasis to the readme by putting in this exclamation point. Okay, so I'm starting to get off into um, an area where we need to spend more time and I don't want to, um, I don't want to go I don't want to go. I don't want to go deeper into the workflow of making changes to an upstream project. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do more of that next week. But I really want to emphasize the importance of understanding all of the commands that we did today. So, git init to create to create a new repository. Git clone with some URL to uh, a git repo to make a copy of it on your local machine. The most important command you're going to use in Git is git status. So getting used to working with git status to figure out what, like you can't look at your files and know if anything's changed. You need git to tell you. So git status as a way of figuring out what's there. Uh, git add for adding files or directories. And where are we adding them to? We're adding them to the staging area, git rm for removing files from the staging area and from the working tree. Git commit to create a new snapshot of the files as they exist, where? In the staging area. Take what's in the staging area and turn it into a new snapshot so that we can look at it. Git log to see what has happened in the past. Git diff which we'll talk about more in the future for seeing the changes that we made. So if we, uh, if we delete something, like if I delete this code here and save it, git diff will show me that I deleted that code. So I want you to play around with these, get used to the idea of um, tracked and untracked files. If I touch, uh, this is, I make a new file and Git is going to tell me that there are untracked files, files that Git is not currently aware of, but it sees that they exist in the working tree, files that it is tracking, and it sees that there are changes that need to be staged before um, you can make a new snapshot to include those. So getting used to the workflow of these tools, and it's gonna take you some time, and Next week, we're gonna add more commands onto this list. So I'd like you to get comfortable working with those commands. I'd like you to understand what they do. And if you're struggling through trying to understand them, I've got some docs for you um, to read this week. And also you can talk to me more about them online. So I'll pause this there and let you practice this on your own.